How many of you have heard that the United States and China are enemies on an ideological level, on a military level, on an economic level? And then you may have been fed a narrative a lot of times through social media that we need to watch China. We need to watch everything that they're doing, yada, 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 because we're enemies. However, the truth could be a little bit in the gray area. China and the United States are very much dependent upon the success of each other. If the Chinese economy is not doing that well, that can have negative impacts on the American economy. If the American economy is not doing that well, that could have a negative impact on the Chinese economy. The Chinese have heavy investment in the United States economy through U.S. debt. United States corporations have invested heavily in a manufacturing footprint in China. Therefore, China and, and the United States have what I would call a working relationship. And what we're going to talk about in this video is the benefits of a working relationship. And this is going to be a video not just for business owners, but also for people that are professional and that are looking to move up in the workplace. Because many times we may not understand the importance of working relationships and we only understand what we believe the importance of personal relationships. So we understand that in this space called social media, personal relationships are really, really high profile. Everybody talks to them. It's easy to get attention around that. However, very successful people are not just successful because they have personal relationships. They're also successful because they understand how to build, develop and nurture working relationships. And that's what we're going to talk about. So let me give an example of what I mean. I have a working relationship with a woman named Cherie, and she has a YouTube channel called Black Women Making Money. Okay? Now, I believe I got connected to her because of her relationship with another woman called Erica Williams, Smart Money Classic Climb. And it's through that relationship is where I got connected to Cherie. And then what Cherie did was she connected me to a woman called Dana, also known as the real Dana. And what was interesting was that my admin reached out to me and said, Cherie emailed you about an opportunity to be on Dana's broadcast because I was missing the emails in my other email folder because I have so many email folders. I miss email sometimes. And the opportunity to be on the real Dana came because Dana and Cherie had a relationship. And I don't know, but I assume that Cherie told Dana, well, David may be a good fit for what you do because of what David brings to the table. Right? So really quickly, let me give you a really good understanding of what I'm talking about. I don't necessarily agree, nor do I have to agree with everything that comes out of Cherie's mouth. I don't have to. That's not essential. Because Cherie and myself do not have a personal relationship. Right? Therefore, I don't have to be in lockstep with every perspective Cherie has or that she may make a statement publicly. It's not about that. However, we do have what we would call a working relationship on some level. Same thing with Dana. I'm not here to agree or to be in lockstep with every perspective Dana may have on something. However, Dana and myself have a level of a working relationship. And so one of the biggest challenges that people have is because they're not really looking to really advance themselves professionally or business wise. They essentially surround themselves by people who only can mirror back to them what they think the world is. Right. If I believe that this scenario is one, two, three, I only look for people to tell me that the scenario is one, two, three. Why? Why? Because I only want my beliefs to be confirmed. Therefore, I surround myself around people and their only value to me is that they agree with me. Well, that could be difficult in creating a working relationship because the goal of a working relationship is not just to make sure the person agrees with you all the time. And this is what can be challenging for a lot of people. And so this is why you may stagnate in business. You may stagnate trying to move up professionally because you've been kind of indoctrinated that all my relationships should be based on the person mirroring back to me what I already believe about the world. Okay. 
Now let's talk about work relationships, but I also want to use this not just in the workplace, but also for the business side. There's a book called Leadership Conversations put out by Bernson and Stieglitz. The four type of work relationships you must cultivate. We're going to talk about targeted relationships, those people you don't know but work in the same industry as U.S. competitors or peers, tentative relationships. These are the people that you have interacted with briefly at a networking event or perhaps a conference, which means what? You got to come out of the house. Transactional relationships. These relationships are less personal. It's usually used by people to accomplish a certain business objective. This is something a lot of people don't understand how to form properly. They have good consumer transaction relationships, but they don't have business or professional transactional relationships. And then trusted relationships, right? These are some of the most important workplace relationships. It includes people that you are close to you at work. Now, you may not get trusted relationships in business, but you can get targeted, tentative, and most definitely transactional relationships. Let me give an example. Panasonic had a, a relationship with Tesla to do batteries. That is a transactional relationship. What's the business objective? Panasonic wants to sell more batteries. Tesla need batteries in the car to sell more cars. It's purely transactional, right? It's not about the two CEOs, right? Taking long, hot showers together and rubbing each other's back. That's not why they're there. It's a transactional situation. Big businesses create these type of relationships all the time. In fact, the United States and China have a transactional relationship. We have certain business objectives that we're trying to accomplish. China has certain business objectives and economic objectives they're trying to accomplish, and that determines the actual framework of the relationship. We may not trust them, but we trust them at a level to do transactions with them. So going back to black women making money, she was able to help me, right? Raise my profile by getting me back on Dana's channel. Then I was able to, over time, become a regular on Dana's channel. Well, if I needed black women making money, and if I needed to agree with everything that she said, and I needed to agree with every perspective she has on the world, right? It could put me in a situation to where I cannot keep the working relationship going because when I wait for her to say the one thing I don't like so I can blow up and talk about, well, I don't deal with her anymore. But if what I'm doing business wise and I really believe in it and I'm very passionate about it, why would I undermine my ability to help more people by worrying about every little thing that comes out of her mouth? She's not here to agree with me all the time. That's not her job on the planet. Right. Therefore, I can't hold her to that responsibility. But many of us have been kind of programmed that the only reason another person is supposed to be around me is because I need them to agree or mirror everything I think about the world. And then we curate our whole life to kind of fit that profile. Therefore, as soon as somebody doesn't say something we like, we blow up and say, well, I can't deal with this person anymore. OK, cool. If it's against your morals, values and principles, I get it. But many times it's often very small things that trigger us to make us say, well, I don't like you because you said this. Well, that person's not here because you like them. They're here because they're here. And having that mentality can impact your ability to create really good working relationships or work relationships. I also don't hold Dana to that standard. I don't watch everything Dana says. I come on Dana's show. Her giving me access to her platform has been a big blessing to me. I hope that we can continue to work together in the future. My goal is to add as much value to her visitors as possible. To continue to justify me being on her platform. I'm not watching everything that comes out of her mouth. I don't really care because it's not her job to conform to my belief system. You understand me? This was a grown woman before I ever met her. Right? So I'm not going to try to sit there and hold her to that. And I'm not watching her for that. Right? We have a working relationship. And the goal is to keep the working relationship going as long as it works for both parties. That ability to be that pragmatic about business in real life, not just in words. But in real life is what's holding a lot of people back. Right. And when I say business, I also mean when you're working in the professional space, which essentially is a form of business. So here's some of the benefits of working relationships. You get access. So something I talked about before you get brain power. Often a person can see something differently than what you see. So let me give an example. I have a really good working relationship and I was very happy because I remember when I first met this person on the Internet. Dr. Chaz. Right from no, no better, do better consulting. Okay. So one time I got a, um, a consult with Dr. Chaz and I had been trading Tesla for, for years. I was trading Tesla 
in like 2020. And Dr. Chad showed me something on the Tesla options chain that I, I just didn't notice it. Right. I just didn't notice it. Even though I had been looking at that options chain for years, I didn't notice it. And her showing that to me has allowed me to become a much more successful trader. What is that? That's brain power. So her ability to see something differently than me put me in a position to become more successful because of work. I was able to leverage her brain power. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? That's because of the working relationship. Right. I'm not I'm not connected to Dr. Chad because I agree with everything she says. I agree with all her perspectives. That's not the goal. Right. The goal is how can we utilize her brain power in a consulting standpoint to help me get what I need to get? That's that's the that's really the, the tone of the relationship. Now, we may have situations past that, but it is a working relationship. So you get that brain power. And so I think this is what a lot of people miss out on. They so much, like I said before, have been indoctrinated that everybody that I deal with has to see things exactly the way I see things. And I'm watching them to make sure they were in lockstep with everything the way I see it. And as soon as they get out of lockstep, I got a problem with them. I can't deal with them anymore. You lose out on a lot of things looking at the world that way. When you understand that the United States is supposed to be a quasi capitalist environment. One of our biggest business partners is a group that says that they are engaged in socialism to approach a communistic state. That's our largest business partner. Right? Because this country doesn't work if we don't have a business partner at the capacity of China. We cannot depend on anybody else to do what they do for us. Another benefit, group pushing towards the same goal. So we're going to talk about it again. I have other people, Body Hood, uh, Lance, uh, Chastity, um, other people I'm connected to. Well, we're trying to get more of our people right in the financial markets. So if I miss anybody, it's not because I miss them because I want to be disrespectful. So when you have a group and we're all pushing towards the same goal, everybody in the group don't have to agree on everything. The goal is to get more people in this particular space called the financial markets because we believe it can be beneficial to them. I'm not watching everybody to make sure that everything that they say or do I agree with. That's not the goal. The goal is to get more people into the space. That's the stage that we're at. So then therefore, when you have a group of people pushing towards the same goal, you create working relationships around that. But see, the goal has to be something real world. If the goal is just to sit on the Internet and just argue and complain, well, then that's easy to do. But when we're trying to get a real a real world result in people. You have to understand that everything is not about you agreeing with everything the other person does. These are grown people that you're dealing with that had full lives before you ever met them. You're not going to agree with everything that they do. It doesn't work that way. That's not how working relationships work. But it can help when you have multiple groups aligned towards the same goal. We develop working relationships around that. Those working relationships don't have to be formal. They can be informal. And they can get us towards the same goal. Another benefit. I have a relationship with a woman out of VA that does something called subconscious therapy. She has her, she has her own group. She had a whole business before I ever met her. I have my business. What are we pushing towards the goal? Helping people become more successful traders. I'm not watching anything she's doing outside of that scenario. I don't care because it don't have anything to do with me. Right? So I'm not clocking her to make sure, well, she say this wrong. She can no longer work with me. She has been a big benefit to my business because she creates a differentiation between my business and everybody else that does the same thing that I do. So she has her own group. We were able to get with my group and we're pushing towards the same goal of what? Helping people become more successful traders. Okay. Aligned incentives. Again, if the goal is to make people become more successful traders and that's the incentive, she has an incentive to become more successful in doing that. I have an incentive to become more successful in doing that. And they were both eating off the success. Many times people cannot form good relationships because they have not in line the incentives. Right. What is the What benefit am I going to get from, he, from this scenario? What benefit are you going to get from the scenario? How can we align these to make some make us something that we have to work for? But if I don't really understand what I'm doing and why I'm here and the other person don't understand what I'm doing and why I'm here that we can't align incentives or it's just 
I'm here so this person can tell me what I want to hear all the time. So they're incentivized to just tell me what I want to hear, even if it's not correct. Because the only reason I'm here is because I just want to hear what I want to hear all the time. So you got to really understand there's benefits to learning how to create really good working relationships, not only in business, but also in your professional life. Now, when somebody tells me I'm leaving X group, community space, etc., My first question is, what were your working relationships in that group? Because we have this mentality. So let me give an example. If you look at a college football team, right? For a home game, they're going to suit up maybe 60 people. The majority of those people that see that suit up never was going to play. They're really just there. So when you look at the side, the team on the sideline, they just look like a deep team. It's more psychological than anything else. Majority of those guys are not going to play, but they will suit up for home games. They don't travel, but they suit up for home games. Okay, so if you're just a guy on the college football team and you only suit up for the home game and then you turn around and say, hey, I'm leaving the team. Well, who cares? You weren't doing anything anyway. You just was a uniform wear at a home game. That was your job. If you leave the team, there is no is there is no detriment on the field or in practice to you not being here because you weren't contributing at a level to where you're actually taken away from something that's going to impact us play-wise or practice-wise or preparation-wise. When somebody jumps on the internet and says, I'm leaving X group, X community space, you know, I'm saving myself, I'm divesting, yada, yada, yada. My question was, what were your working relationships in that group? So if you're divesting from a group, what were your working relationships in the group before you started to divest? What were they? Can you explain them? Can you detail them? You can't ask that question because now I'm asking you, what was your responsibility in the failure of this situation? If you're going to go save your own self, what were your working relationships in the group that you're saving yourself from before you decided that you needed to go save yourself? What were your working relationships? So many people, were you involved in any community organizations? And I don't just mean like activists, and I mean like your churches. Were you involved in your mosque? Were you involved in any type of faith-based organizations in your area? Were you involved in any organizations in your area? Did you volunteer in your area? So whatever you claim you're passionate about, were you volunteering in that area before you decided to leave that area? And what you would often find is that many people that are so adamant about leaving X community group space, they had no impact in their local area in the real world. What they were were they were the eighth linebacker. Right. They were the eighth linebacker. OK, on the on the college football team that only put on a uniform when there was a home game. But now that they have a platform to express themselves, they're now been able to find all the other eighth linebackers on the college football team that only suited up when there was a home game to talk about how they're leaving the team. So that's what we're getting a lot. We're getting a lot of the eighth linebacker, and that's a unisex example. It's not just for men. It's also for women. We're getting a lot of the eighth linebacker on the college football team. And anybody that knows football knows you rarely going to play eight, the eighth guy in a linebacking core, even if we're playing a 3-4, we got four guys on the field at the same time. We got to get a lot of guys hurt to get to that eighth guy, right? But we're getting a lot of the eighth linebacker on the college football team who only suits up when there is a home game just so they can wear the uniform so we can look like we deep on the sideline. But all of those eighth linebackers is on the internet talking about they're leaving X community group space. So you got to really understand when you have not built the working relationships, that can be the reason why things are not going the way you desire in your environment. And if you go to another environment, to another group, and you still don't learn how to build those working relationships, trust me when I tell you, you're going to just hamster wheel. You're going to groundhog day with a totally different group of people because the problem is in your inability to develop good relationships as opposed to your ability to develop relationships and things just did not go the way you wanted them to go. Now let's transition to some examples of what I'm talking about. Let's look at the working relationship between the United States and China. 